What's going on, people? Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another transfer update video for you guys today. As you guys can tell, the format is a little bit different. I'm not recording on my phone for today, but that's because we are going to be going through um, an eye-opening thread, a very eye-opening thread. You guys would have seen this from my stream yesterday if you guys were watching, but we're going to go for a thread that probably breaks the mold and helps understand this entire PR overload that seems to follow Mason Mount. Wherever the transfer saga seems to take him, be it Bayern Munich, Manchester United, staying at Chelsea, potentially, that was reported as well. We're going to delve into this entire Mason Mount saga because that there is a lot of layers to get into in this one. We're going to touch on Nicholas Jackson as well, as well as any other of the latest transfer news that is um, following Chelsea, I guess. So yeah, hit the like button, subscribe, let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Check out my personal channel as well. And yeah, let's get into it. So last night we got a lot of news. A lot of news. It said United dropped interest in Mount. This is from Nathan Gissing. Felix Johnson also reported something very similar as well. The current feeling is that he is staying and Mount ideally never wanted to leave Chelsea. Mount felt he was getting forced out of the club and his last offer was back in February. Only a one-year extension. Now, Felix Johnson also reported something very similar to this as well. Um, just trying to get that one up on the big screen for you guys as well. Um, said, no idea if United dropped out, but as I said in the space, Mount never wanted to leave Chelsea. Club briefing after club briefing. Mount leaving is surmounted from no offer since February the 1st. Nothing to do with Mount himself wanting to leave, even though he's never really accepted an offer in the first place, despite there being... Um, offers since, when was it? Last August. Last August. Fabrizio came out an hour later saying Chelsea United are still in contact and the expectation is that Mason Mount will leave. It's down to clubs now to find a solution. It's not over yet. Chelsea offered to meet in person. Today, you also said United 55 million bid remains valid. The decision is made together with Ten Hag. There is no chance for them to overpay on this situation. United want Mount as he's shown a strong desire to join. United won't make any unrealistic bid. And on the Mount side, he's still believing he will leave Chelsea. Big up to, to Felix Johnson. Big up to Nathan Gissing. They do get things correct. And when it comes to lineups and stuff, they're usually spot on. But with a saga like this, with something that's been dragging on for so long, I, I can't lie, you guys. I am not believing their news without a Fabrizio or an Ornstein stamp of approval. Every single article, every single post, every single direction that this transfer is pointing towards is directing at the fact that Mason Mount doesn't want to be here. And him ideally never wanting to leave is a load of arse, personally. Seeing as the only thing that we've heard from Mason Mount's camp is from his representatives, who told Fabrizio that he's not signing any new deal to drive his transfer value down. Everything from the Chelsea-only sources screams Mount PR briefing because they're actually a bit worried about the deal falling through and they're worried that they need to save a little bit of face. Don't let this Mount revisionism spin your head. We might not hear directly from Mason Mount, but let's call it what it is. His actions speak for himself. The silence we've heard from Mount specifically is deafening. And his representatives represent him and his beliefs. And they have said he is not signing a new deal. They're saying he is not staying at Chelsea and he is leaving. So you have to take it as that. Fact is, United haven't pulled out. At the most, they don't want to raise their offer, but they're just trying to play victims and they're trying to act like Chelsea are pricing him out when we clearly want to sell and we clearly have a valuation of the player. And I don't even really blame them. You can claim Mount isn't worth 60, 65 million, but Havertz isn't, and we got that much money for him. And Mount's been a better player for Chelsea than Mount has ever been for us. So I understand it personally. Even with the one year left, you're a rival, there's homegrown tax, and he's a player that has actually been good for us at a certain point. So you need to fork up the money. Briefing out, briefing to people that you're focusing on a more expensive midfielder in Caicedo is bollocks. It's absolute bollocks. Why would you pull out of Mount, who's been your number one target, to go and get somebody that costs more? If we're talking about money and everything, that makes no sense. They're angling to try and push the price down while they're leaving themselves room to come in again and accept the normal price if it doesn't change. 
That's all it is. Hell, Brighton are even hard enough to negotiate with themselves. All this is is just mental games. Both sides don't want to, send to, to set a precedent that they make bluffs and they want to show that they can stand firm in the space of tight negotiations. But this is why I think it all gets resolved when they meet in person. If you guys are meeting in person to sort this situation, no way it will not be solved. No way they do not walk out that meeting without a conclusion. But I want to talk about this PR stuff because there was a thread that came out on Twitter yesterday and Alex has asked me to talk about this as well. It's very interesting. Speaks a lot about the PR nonsense that we've been seeing from Chelsea for so long. This is a thread on the sports PR company, which is an organization that Mason Mount hired to manage his public image and press. And it explains a lot like why a journalist that we all know loves Mason Mount as well. Big up to Xenophobic FC, the guy who made the article on this. Um, so let's go through it. So the sports PR company is run by Caroline McAteer, who is responsible for creating the legendary media image, which David Beckham had while he was at Manchester United. Her ties at United run deep, which may be one of the reasons why Mason Mount is obsessed with going to Old Trafford. McIntyre is known for her ability to generate positive press and make bad stories go away. Don't believe me? Have you heard the story of Drogba raising $1.7 for ill Africans who somehow didn't get the money? Probably not, because she made it go away. And I actually never really heard of that one. The sports PR company began representing Drogba, and when that happened, he tr uh, she transformed his public image. She got him a commercial deal with Pepsi, just like Mount got after he switched to their agency this year. Drogba is now a renowned humanitarian, and McAteer helped him become one. Drogba says working with her has changed how the press treats him. I wonder um, if it's a coincidence that we've seen scores of articles, tweets come out this past year over how essential, skilled, creative, intelligent, and important Mason Mount is. And Drogba says, since I started working with a sports PR company, a lot of things have changed, especially with the press. And I think it's really important for a player to have people like them around you to build, improve or change your image. I think I'm basically wondering, look who the sports PR company were tagging in tweets and on train rides with in 2012. Matt Law of The Telegraph, who was previously a journalist with The Mirror, as it shows here, which is brazy, brazy detective work, but fair play. What has Matt Law written about Mount recently? Losing Mount would be a calamity for Chelsea in March, in spite of the fact he was terrible up until then and only completed two through balls between um, February and September. No, August to February, by the way. The data that shows Mason Mount's hidden value to England, I remember reading this article. It was talking about things like distance covered and successful presses between the midfield and the attack. Even though on the pitch, England played like crap with Mason Mount and their performances didn't really improve until Mason Mount was out of the team. But the point still stands. Other than that 6-1 win over Iran, which is like, respectfully, it's Iran. Let's not overstate anything. But the point still stands. Takes me to another key point in Mount's contract negotiations. Image rights. Why did Caroline stop repping the Beckhams? A clash over image rights. Chelsea have been widely reported to be refusing to cave in on this, which makes Mount insistent to leave even clearer. All in all, it's become more and more evident that one of the main reasons Mount wants to leave is the clash over image rights and branding. And he's been on a tear this year from Aldi to Pepsi as he tries to make himself this generation's David Beckham with more um, adverts and goals and assists this season. But proper Chels, proper Chels. Another example of the branding obsession is launching Mason Mount March, a hashtag aimed at having his fans like Johnny Minerals make edits of him on TikTok. The day after his lack of clinical finishing caused the club to lose the Carabao Cup to longtime rivals Liverpool. Unbelievable. I remember reading about this as well. Like, it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. You need to keep going through this, though, because I'm also pushing my stream further back. All in all, the sports PR agency greatly benefits from Mount moving to Old Trafford. They can better mould him to be Beckham 2.0 there. And this, alongside the fact that his father supports United and he isn't a guaranteed starter at Chelsea, is why he's so desperate to leave. His dad being a United fan, didn't even know that. Craziness. That thread is fucking mad, by the way. But image rights was spoken about with Mason Mount throughout the season, so I'm also not too surprised that that is actually the driving force behind this. But this is also why Chelsea are looking for so much money for Mount. They understand 
the brand and everything. Even though, like, it's not a massive brand, there's a chance it could be a bigger one if Mason Mount improves in a Manchester United shirt. So if you want the money, fork it up, Man United. Fork it up. Um, Nicholas Jackson has also signed for Chelsea. Eight-year contract. Medical's been completed. Don't even know how we pulled an eight-year contract out. Maybe it's because it's not past July yet and the new FFP rules haven't come into effect. But welcome to the Chelsea Penitentiary, Nicholas Jackson. Apparently, he's the most clinical striker in the league, according to stats. So please, please bring that form to Chelsea. I beg you. But let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. It's been the end of yet another transfer discussion. Like, subscribe, and as always, up the Chelsea.